just in here sniggling and giggling. You know how we do. It's a Kiki and a Tra La La. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just gonna cheat this camera in a little bit. I want you guys to really be able to see me. I know me. There we go. Uh uh. There we go. Woo child, the ghetto. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. <laughs> How are we doing today? How are we feeling today? If you just tuned in or have no idea why you're here or even where you are, my name is William Bryant Miles. You can call me WBM, which means you're watching what? Wake up with WBM, which is morning TV for the 21st century, where what was once up is now down and what was down is now up. I don't uh, know what today is. You know, because I really, actually I know what today is, I'm completely lying to you. Today is Wednesday, the 15th of July. It means that your taxes are due, allegedly. It means that you, um, if you observe, it is Jackie Washington Day. They all stole from me. For those of you that don't know what Jackie Washington Day is, that is your problem. And you need to figure it out. No, don't you hate when people, this is like one of my peeves in the 21st century. Yes, I know that Google is free, and I know that anything we need to learn, um, Google is there to teach us, and I know that, and you know that, and everyone knows that, and I fucking hate when you ask someone a question, or if you're talking about something like how I'm talking about Jackie Washington Day, and they just simply say, oh, um, you could look it up. Like, I could look it up, but I'm also talking to you. And if you know it, why are you withholding that information? And I notice that happening most often when we're talking about, like, matters of race um, or cultural experience, you know, where people would be like, well, why don't you... I don't know what so-and-so means or blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, well, I mean, you could look it up. And it's like, well, yeah, I could, but you also could, like, answer that for me. Like, I remember somebody was having a conversation about... Look at that, just ghetto. Um, somebody was having a conversation about um, trans identity and like the nomenclature around that cis, hetero, trans, homo, etc. And somebody was just like, well, what does that mean? And they're like, I mean, there's always Google. Like, uh, yes, there's Google, but clearly if you and I are having a conversation and we don't have the, the, the term um, common understanding rather, then like, what is the point of the conversation, right? Like if you're withholding information, uh, Brianna on Facebook said, it's dismissive, you're not my parent. If you're not my parent, look it up, it's dismissive. And I absolutely believe that. Um, so today we're going to have a little fun. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Do I ever? But I have something different. As you guys can see, I prepped my face. I've been using a few of my cleansers and I spent too much money at a few retailers whose names I'm not going to give here because I paid them, they didn't pay me. Um, but we're just going to, um, so I've washed, I use a face, for those of you wondering what the steps are to be me on a daily basis, I wake up, I use a face wash, I use a toner and then I use a vitamin C serum and a moisturizer. And then in the evenings, um, post-workout, um, I'll, if I work out, you know, I'll go ahead and cleanse again, depending on how look I feel I may or may not tone I don't like to over tone I mean they say you should always use a toner but I use a witch hazel toner so I don't want to dry out my skin um and then I use the vitamin c serum again again depending on how hot it is right now I may not put the moisturizer back on top of that and then in the evening I go ahead and wash my face again tone and then I use a night oil um sometimes I put a moisturizer on top of that but it's been really hot so I don't do that these days um this is going to squirt everywhere. It only is with this color, which I just think is so funny. Oh, look, I got it down to a science. Um, so today I have a lot to talk to you about, but the dog ate my homework, so I don't remember what those things are. But just a few things that are going on in the world. So the world is opening back up. The stores are open. I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a theater, it is a theater, in, um, where is that place? In Indianapolis, where they opened the theater back up. It's a dinner theater. And, you know, part of me, I'm of two minds about this. And they got the performance on stage wearing face shields, blah, 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 blah. But the thing about a dinner theater, right, is essentially it's an indoor restaurant. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to be eating food, um, so you're not wearing your masks or whatever. And that's fine. It's really not fine. But what's crazy to me about this particular theater is that they were all like, we're following the mayor's orders, blah, blah, blah. 
we're limiting capacity. They said to no more than 250 guests. That's a lot of fucking people um, to be sitting in there. And then they're doing Beehive. Like, so you tell me you're risking it all to watch a fucking fifth-rate production of an eighth-rate musical and to eat some dry-ass, unflavored chicken? I just don't understand people. But, you know, get it how you live, Indianapolis. Do you. Patricia, on, or excuse me, of Noble Birth on Facebook said, or excuse me, Instagram, <laughs> excuse me, said, context, if you're being purposely obtuse, the answer is look it up. If we are having a genuine and earnest combo, I'm happy to enlighten you. Right. That's absolutely true. But I feel like 95% of the people that we see on, you know, like the, the example I was talking about was on The Breakfast Club, right? So I would imagine that on The Breakfast Club, why would you be trying to be obtuse? Your point is supposed to be to share your point of view with the masses and to bring more people into your cause, I would think. But I also don't fucking know because I ain't been on The Breakfast Club, right? And that's how that works. If you ain't never done it, you can't have an opinion about it. That's what the people say. Which brings me to my next point. So I was watching some things online. Um, and one of my friends, Facebook friends, said that they were very frustrated that people say that Janet Jackson can't sing. And that, um, who was the other example? Mary J. Blige cannot sing. Which then sparked a big debate because, you know, he was like, he really enjoys them as singers. And so my point of view of it was... I just feel like if you are not a singer yourself or are not, you don't have to be a singer, but if you haven't studied music or studied singing, I don't think that you have the, I'm not even going to say authority, I don't think that you have the necessary information to say that these girls can't sing or these women can't sing or can't sing. I think that you can say that you don't enjoy their singing, but I just don't think that you are qualified to say that they cannot sing. And my reason for that is very simple, which is that how can you tell someone that they can't do something if you don't even know what it takes to do it? Now you can, and so then the person's retort was, well, are you telling me that if I go to a restaurant and don't like the food, I can't tell the chef that they can't cook? And I'm like, no, you cannot tell the chef they can't cook. You can say that you didn't enjoy the meal, right? Because you didn't. And I, th I don't think that you're, and then, you know, people get into the whole, well, it's my opinion. And I'm like, yes, any of us can formulate an opinion on anything. I can cut you open right now and be like, my opinion is that your appendix needs to come out. What's that based in? Absolutely nothing. What is um what is what qualifies me to make that opinion? Absolutely nothing. But it's my opinion and I'm allowed to have it. You know what I mean? And so I felt like that is very frustrating to me. And I think that like as an artist, um, both as a practitioner and as a student of it, it gets very frustrating. And I think this is perhaps the most frustrating thing about our field for me, which is that, you know, you're always one Robert Anthony said, art is subjective. And yes, you're always subjective to the opinions of people who don't necessarily have the sophistication to be able to offer the like blanket assessments. Now, again, I think that using a restaurant analogy, you can be like, I don't like this meal. I don't ever want to pay for it again. I'm going to say everybody I went there, the food was not good. I didn't enjoy it. Um, but I don't know that you get to say that the chef can't cook. Because you don't know all that goes into it. Maybe what the chef was offering just wasn't to your taste, right? Like maybe they're into molecular gastronomy and you wanted something very straightforward or vice versa. And so for me, that's very frustrating. And then like in that specific example, I'm like, you know, there's more than one way to be a great singer. And if you don't understand singing, you wouldn't get that. That like singing ain't only belting and singing the highest note possible. And I think that like, Mary is not one of my favorite singers, right? But one thing I cannot deny is that what Mary does well as a singer is very important to all singers and many singers wish that they could get there, which is Mary knows how to be very free and emotionally available in a way that is really exciting and powerful and beautiful. Um, and that is not true for so many, so many artist um and so i'm like i'm not going to discredit her and say she can't sing i think you know what makes the line a little blurrier for mary j blige is that miss thing has sometimes problems with like pitch and accuracy um but then i also oh look i got a tan y'all and even with this fake foundation wrong color foundation i'm just looking extra dark and i love it but that means this contour is not doing what it wants um that is like you know 
So that does create some challenges, I think, for MJB that are not there for Janet. And my thing with Janet is like, is Janet the biggest belter? No. Is Janet the rangiest singer? No. Has Janet ever professed to be those things? No. But is Janet giving you a very specific and beautiful style unto itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I hate when people try to split hairs with this. She's an entertainer versus a singer versus a pop star. It's like, at the end of the day, to me, those are all kind of like subcategories of singers. You know what I mean? Like, you're getting paid to sing. Now, what your style is, some people have a melismatic, uh, operatic, you know, balladeer style. And then some people have a more poppy, whatever style. I don't think that we should be sitting here telling them that because their style is not one way or the other, that they can't do it. And then what I also find funny is that, like, usually these girls that say that the women, that these folks can't sing, only like one kind of singer. You know what I mean? Like, they literally will be like, you start naming other people. You name Bjork, you name Dolly Parton. And they have nothing to bring to the conversation because they don't study the work, right? They don't they don't have that range. She doesn't have the range <laughs> um, to deal with it. To give y'all also like a little bit of where we're going today, we're going to play with, we'll see. Um, so yeah, so that's what I had to offer on that. Memory, that's a little foreshadowing. <laughs> Of Noble Bird said, that's like me and Brandy. I don't like her voice, but I would never deny she can sing and has talent. Yeah, and I think that that would be absolutely correct. So something else happening in the world not related to singers. Um, if you touch me, you'll understand what happiness is. Look, a new day can be out. No, um... So, blah, 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 Red Table Talk, Entanglement, blah, 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 Jada Pinkett is a predator, um, blah, 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 allegedly. So, the issue I had for those of you that didn't watch the Red Table Talk, Jada brought herself to the table, whatever that means these days. My issue with Jada coming to the table, it's very simple, and it's that I, I mean, I think that she's very smart about um how she phrases things and i think that she you know she didn't lie from where i sit or you know it seems i don't know it seemed like she gave us all the accurate information but she also made sure that she didn't give us too much you know i mean it's been in the game for 20 plus years with like at the highest level of course they have spin down to a science but you know she didn't um give us too much and she didn't give me really much of anything and the reason why I think that there's some predation going on and I you know people have been debating like well they were all adults and I'm like y'all do know that adults can prey on other adults right like you don't have to be a child to be preyed on right like that's what um predatory lending is all about adults preying on other adults when people call the old people and take advantage of them and make them get reverse mortgages they didn't want to get that is them um preying on old people that like predation does not only involve adults and children that's obviously the clearest and the the most um explicit form or the, the sharpest form but the only form and so i think you can also prey on people when they're vulnerable right and i think a person coming to you in a moment where they're supposed to be expressing um or you're supposed to be helping them heal or whatever language she used to describe that it seems to me to get into a romantic entanglement would be a little inappropriate you know what i mean but who are me to judge? Side note, did y'all see Info out here acting a plum fool in the best way possible? Um, if not, Google it. No, I'm joking. But um, it was kind of funny. But yeah, so that to me is why she's whatever. But I'm also kind of like, girl, we want the real tea. August was the tip of the iceberg. If y'all not going to really come to the red table it's about all the freaky deaky business that ain't none of ours, y'all could have kept that. To me, it reminded me of when they were talking about Scientology and it was like, I guess, yeah, y'all talked about it because y'all were at the red table and the word Scientology came up, but I didn't leave there feeling real clear and resolved. And my thing was like, I didn't necessarily leave this feeling real clear and resolved because what I wanted to know was like, why was Will done with you? You know what I mean? Like, that question, August is the, the distraction. August is the distraction. August is the distraction. Um, I wanted to know why Will was done with you. Someone said, um, prayed on, that's a stretch. There are 
all adults of means. We don't have enough information to make that assessment. I'm making that assessment based on explicitly what she said, which was August was introduced to her by her son. He's a peer of her son, both in age and experience. And um, he was introduced to her by her son. So that already, I think, places them in one space to help uh, to help him heal and work on some things. Like, if someone is introduced to you as a mentor, whatever age they are, and they know that you're fragile and then some sort of relationship develops after that, you know, it'd be a little inappropriate. If this was a corporate relationship, it would be inappropriate. She would be, you know, recommended by HR. If it was Will and Kiki Palmer, I don't think the line would seem as blurry, right? I don't think the line would seem as blurry. But I also don't know that I care as much as I seem to, but that's what y'all be talking about. So I got to talk about what the people are talking about. Both of them were fragile. Girl, by blocked, reported. Um, burned out pages. Um, I realize I probably should have had a picture for what I'm trying to do because I literally don't know any further at this point. Um, so let me try to look something up on the internet while I do that. So um, what else is happening in the world? It was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, have you guys caught up when I, w I May Destroy You? The thing that is so good about that show that I love, and I think that Michaela is just doing so masterfully right now, is that she took this one seemingly, I mean, not simple, but this seemingly specific um, incident, which is her sexual assault, and she's just touched on so many points. She's gotten into white fragility and white girl tears and, like, the old like, young black boys and how they have to, we have to fend for ourselves in the education system. And, you know, it just covered so much ground and just, like, abuse and how sexual abuse is just one facet of it. And even within that, how people manipulate it and talk about, you, you know, manipulate it and uh, welcome to New York City, if you can hear that. Um, you know, so there's that part or there's that going on with it. Um, if you guys are not all caught up, maybe skip ahead, like, five minutes. But, um... Terry is trash. Her best friend. I just don't like that character. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out who I dislike more, Molly or Terry. And I actually think I dislike Terry more. Because I just feel like Terry, to me, is just kind of like really self-absorbed. Um, and more than simply just being self-absorbed, I think that she tries to like make it seem like she... Um, like, the thing about Molly that I will say is that, like, in her self-righteousness, she's never alluded to being... Molly has never alluded to being altruistic. She's just kind of been like, I'm the victim and you're a fucked up person. Like, she's never been like, everything I've done is to help you. And I feel like that is some of what Terry is doing. Where it's like, girl, if your friend is trying to heal in this way, what does that have to do with you can be a part of that. You're, if your goal is for your friend's healing, you shouldn't be so upset that she's not healing in the, you know, at the workshop or the <laughs> Jessica Gabriel looks like they're both cut from the same cloth of trash. <laughs> there was a Kente cloth joke in there that we both just left on the table, but, um, or maybe even like a Nigerian joke, but we just gonna leave that there. Um, but yeah, you know, like for me, that was just kind of, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have an edible. But no, that was, like, that's why I feel like Terry is trash because she's, like, trying to allude to that, you know, it's because I care. And it's like, girl. And then, like, for those of you that didn't catch up to last week's episode, we're going to talk about it a little bit. And so, in the last week's episode, um, Arabella, which is Michaela Cole's character, comes to understand that a person taking off the condom while she's having sex, while he's having sex with you, and doesn't tell you is a form of rape. And so at this conference, she announces that the guy who did that raped her because he's also present at the conference. Um, and the issue that I have with Terry was that she was supposed to come in and like do a reading for um, Arabella. And Arabella, like the thing about it was Arabella stuck her neck out from jump. Like when they first said, we want this to be read, she was like, I know a bitch. I'm going to get my friend in there, which is what you do for your friends, right? Friends put you on. I have been blessed by many people to put me on. I try my best to put as many people on as possible. It's the circle of life. But 
then right before she's supposed to go on, Terry, who claims she want to be an actor, is like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. But she doesn't say why she can't do it. And I just thought that was whack because it's like she didn't even understand or interrogate the fact that, like, your friend needs you in this moment as well and you just have centered yourself. So, yeah, somebody, uh, Nixter V said, LOL, you just hate best friends. I have too many best friends to say that I hate them. I feel like we've already had this exchange here. Um, but I hate trash as best friends. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those at the current time. But it looks like somebody's uh, auditioning for that um, position. So more to come on that. So yeah, so that's where I am with that. Burnt out pages. So I'm over here literally like trying to figure out what this makeup situation is going to look like. But basically, you'll see. Um... that that's where we're going with that so it's been really hot like i've been gardening i don't know how many of you guys knew that well we talked about the caterpillar that destroyed my um pepper plant and now my fucking zucchini has some sort of like infection or something and it's been really hard for me i hope i don't start crying about this but it's been really hard for me because these are the things that they don't fucking tell you when they sell you the plant you know what i mean i guess it's like having kids like nobody tells you that the shit's gonna be raggedy and you just have to dug it out and work it out and so it's been very hard for me because I don't have a lot of plants like that. You know, like when you go to a farm, they got 8, 10, 12, 50 tomato plants, 16, 17, 35 pepper plants, 300, 200, 400 zucchini plants. I have one of each. And so that they're struggling right now is a lot for me because I just don't feel successful. I don't have food. I mean, I have food, that's a lie, but I just don't feel successful and I just um, I don't know what to do, you know what I mean? And I guess that's, this is like the, this is the, um, the journey of it all, if you will. But um, yeah, it's very, I'm just saying, that's all I have to say about that. And that's that on that. Um, but so we'll see if these pepper plants make it. Um, but yeah, burnt out pages. Um, we'll see what happens with that. So it was something else. Oh, so I was thinking about like with back to like singers who people who think that like can sing or can't sing. I've been listening to a lot of Queen Latifah recently. Really, just one song coming to my house, which I think is lit, and it made me also start thinking about RuPaul's Drag Race. Because I was like, has there ever been a lip sync on it? Because one of my most favorite drag queens ever, Alley Cat Blue from the House of Blue in Washington, D.C., does a great performance to that number. And it's such a good lip sync because it has so many words and, you know, it's so rhythmic and melodic. Um, but it's also house music, so it's very up-tempo and just like a lot of fun. Um... And so I've been really getting into that. And then I started reflecting on Drag Race. I'm watching, I don't know how I got into this, called Charge It to the, um, Charge It to the Epidemic. But I've been like really into this season of Drag Race All-Stars. And I just really want to say justice for the Latina queens. Because um, that damn Alexis Mattel thing week after week. And spoiler alert. She got sent home. And the thing that makes me mad is that there's a queen there, Blair St. Clair, Blair St. Clair, who is super boring and is white. And, like, I think that she thinks that her talent is being thin and white. Like, that is literally her talent. Like, week after week, she'd be like, I'm a threat. And then she just gets on the runway and she's super skinny and she's super white. And that is supposed to be the talent. And she supposedly is a, a runway queen. That's, like, her her thing, right? It's like, she's a fashion girl. She's a fashion girl. And so she, um, she gets on there and the fashion challenge, they have to actually make something from scratch. So, and just a little bit of backtracking, like I was raised by drag queens in DC. You know what I mean? I was raised by my mother and my family in New York City. But I always joke that like, I'm like, I went to DC, you know, I was born and raised in New York. I became a man in DC. And that's because in DC is when, is where, I started going to clubs is where I really, you know, I came out before I left New York. Um, I came out in high school, but um, 
I didn't really come out full out until I left, you know, until I was in D.C. And that's where I really, I mean, I think where most of us go to college or spend your 18 to 25 years, you know, that, that the early 20s is where you really come into your adulthood, right? Like, because I could legally drink in D.C. So that's when I started going to bars and ordering stuff like amaretto sours, thinking I was grown and being like, let me get Kahlua and creme de menthe on the rocks. And read a book at a bar on a Friday night like a weirdo. Because I thought that was what grown people did. Um, I did that in D.C. And then, of course, drag queens, gay men, all these wonderful um, mentors I had helped me come into my own. And so their aesthetic, that's where I got introduced to the art of drag. Um, aesthetic, I'll say this. It is not, by design, it is not glossy. It's glamorous, but it's not glossy. Um, you know, it's about making do with what you have. And I also think there's a big part of it that's about like fighting for your freedom and your right to be, which I don't think a lot of these young white girls on Drag Race understand that like these people are fighting for the right to be, that like elsewhere in the world, they have not been allowed to be, right? Like simple as that. And so these drag spaces is where they can assert themselves and they can really be and become. And so... For me, it was very like, um, I don't love these days the drag race of it all that simply has you um, being like, who can, you know, who has the most money to buy uh, the actual designer gown or a faux designer gown? Like that is who is going to triumph, right? Like I just think that that's really kind of corny. And so what I loved about the early days of Drag Race was that they had all those design challenges and kind of like these great equalizers where like even if you didn't come with the best looks or the most money, you're going to be equalized because we have to figure out how to just work it out. In the moment, you got to come, you got to cobble together some things. You have to figure out, we've all been thrust with the same complication at once and we have to figure this out right now. So we'll really see. May the best woman win and you get to actually see that in the moment because we're all kind of you know incubated in the same way but it's like if you show up with eight trunks and I show up with one trunk at a certain point I'm not going to be able to win especially when the judges root their critiques in the fact that my clothes look a little tattered you know what I mean that they're not really doubling down on or not zooming honing in on or homing is it honing in or homing in on the fact that like oh I see your point of view and your aesthetic and your perspective and so, um, of Nova Birth said, I don't watch Drag Race, but I heard that, but I heard that is RuPaul's thing. Um, spend the amazing black girls home and keep the plain white ones. They used to walk into the room with clothes from Wet Seal and Charlotte Russe and have to sew a look every challenge. And my, I think every drag queen don't sew, um, but every drag queen, at least the ones I grew up with, they knew how to hustle, right? And I don't, I don't just mean hustle. But, um, oh, we got to talk about P-Valley. That's what it was. But um, they, uh, you know what I mean? It's like they actually know how to cobble together a look and they know how to work it out. And so to um, of Noble Birth's point, my issue is that they, um, they definitely are rewarding like how closely you are aligned to whiteness. And the Vixen had tried to call them out about this a little while ago and kind of got dragged by the show and its supporters um, because they... The Vixen was just basically, and this was the sharpest point they made, so pretty much every season there's like an unauthorized musical where RuPaul will parody one of his favorite icons life and so they've done um, Madonna, Dolly Parton and the, you know, Cher and a bunch of other white people. They've never done a black queen and so, you know, granted even though there's so many, right, there's Diana Ross who is a known influence of RuPaul's, Beyonce, so many so many, so many and um they they never did any of those artists. And so it's like already you're at a deficit if you don't align yourself with whiteness because if you didn't grow up with Cher as a touch point or cultural touchstone, then you have to work that much harder to be, you know, especially when they critique you like, you didn't really get Cher in the 50s. That look was not what Cher would have worn when she was at home at dinner with her mother. And it's like, well, bitch, I don't know who, what the fuck Cher would have worn. And y'all gave me three photos from the 70s. And so I had to cobble together what I thought it would be. You know what I mean? Whereas if you would have said somebody from your their community. And so what I love this season on All Stars was that Alexis Mateo, who is P Puerto Rican, has very much centered everything about 
um, their competi- their work in the competition in their Puerto Rican um, identity. And so the last week's challenge was um, to take a sip. But last week's challenge was for them to do like the country cousin coming to the barbecue, right? And so you had to say what you, so there was two looks. One was, you brought this from beforehand, what you what your country cousin will wear to the barbecue and you had to do a little discussion, a, a little monologue about who you are and what you brought. And then the second look was you had you were given a bag of shit and you had to make a look inspired by different barbecue items. So they had like lawn chair furniture or lawn furniture, um, solo cups, gingham, of course, you know, all the different things, shuttlecocks and whatever from badminton, all the different things for that. And you had to make a look and each person had not the whole collection, but like a specific item from that range. Alexis Mateo's first look, first of all, created what I thought was a really interesting story because he's supposed to be RuPaul's country cousin. So their story was, their backstory was that they were supposed to be RuPaul's maid. And so they were saying that they were, you know, the Latina maid who was showing up uninvited to the, um, <laughs> uninvited to the barbecue. I'm laughing because Jessica Gabriel says sex on the beach, talking about grown up jokes. Um, showed up uninvited to the barbecue. Uh, and so they had, you know, this little cheap ass dress from, wet seal or rainbow and it's like if you know anything about latinas to me that was giving me like their version of the country cousin right like i think and so one of the critiques they got um they alexis did do this wig reveal that was kind of whack but um you know that look wasn't flawless but it was kind of whack um but the outfit and everything i thought the first look was fine and they brought coquito which i also thought was very funny because like if you know anything about puerto rican people that is something that is actually very spot on, right? Like, people always be like, I got the best coquito, I, 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 I. I don't mean to be racist if that's how that sounded. But um, I just felt like they already had a deficit because it's like centering it in a country cousin and not understanding that, like, country kind of can be a metaphor or a euphemism for um, less sophisticated, right? Especially if we in- embrace all 50 of the United States and the various territories that we've colonized, you have to understand that country is going to look different in every person's um, imagination and experience. And so I just felt like the fact that they don't understand, these judges don't understand this diverse or this different background puts Alexis at a deficit. And then the fact that Alexis put together a fee, it's like she had solo cups and she made the outfit from scratch, made a whole gown, used the pool to flute the gown out, and they're over here talking about oh, the proportion wasn't right because it hit you a little. And it's like, I turned a kiddie pool into the crinoline under my skirt and you're getting mad about proportions when you know how long and what materials I had. Meanwhile, this other skinny white bitch is literally walking around with two scraps of fabric pinned together that are falling apart as she walks down the runway and y'all are trying to say that there's parody or like we're we're in the same conversation. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Even when Alexis's um, prom look, some of the people, this didn't happen on the show, but just other people in the drag race community were over here talking about um oh i don't know that that was uh prom enough and it's like have you ever seen a latina girl going to prom that is how they look that is how they look going to the quince like are you kidding me um why is everything rooted in what you think your prom I, i just get very frustrated by that so um yeah so that's what that's that on that um, midnight, midnight. So, yeah. so I just think that like, you know, and then if you even think about a lot of the humor on the show is definitely centered in a whitish aesthetic, right? And I think that like the further you stray from that, and when you look at most of the people that come to judge, how often do they have like black judges who are coming there really with like a black aesthetic who like, if you start tapping people on the head and they falling out and you know you start praise dancing that that is going to get you points how many how often is that or you know and the show is not only black and white queens so the same thing is true for the asian queens the latin latinx queens and also the different um i guess there's diversity within whiteness i don't know not, that's not my walk so i just felt like i'm just kind of like over the show in that way and then you have these middle of the road blase white people who are just getting by on thinking that being skinny and white is a talent and nobody's checking it and i'm just like rupaul you know too busy fracking on your ranch and you see rupaul done went radio silent and um i'm literally over here trying to figure out what the hell it is i'm gonna do but um rupaul done went radio silent and is 
cancel all all of their social and everything. Oh, I see something. But what do you do with that? You know, oh, oh, I got an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work though. It's not gonna work. Um, so yeah, so that that's that on that. Oh, grr. so P Valley, who's watching it? Anybody watching P Valley? I'll wait. I enjoyed aspects of it. I enjoyed it overall. I think it was a fun moment. Ain't shit else on TV. Um, side note, what are we doing with our Goya products? I know we aren't buying new, but should I dump this peach nectar or drink it? With any cancellation of a brand, unless it's something that is like out in the world and it's not a car. Like I think if you had a big t-shirt that say Goya, maybe don't wear that to the gym. But I feel like Goya don't already got their money off that peach nectar. So you would just be a fool to not drink it. You would be a fool to just throw away your Goya to me. I think that that would be dumb because Goya has already made money from it. And so you aren't even enjoying the benefit of a purchase that you already made. I don't think you should go, um, I don't think you should throw it away. I mean, I definitely don't think you should throw it away and I don't think you should buy any more, but I think you'd be foolish not to. Again, I don't know that I would be bringing to the cookout. I brought my Goya beans to the cookout. You know what I mean? But if you want to make beans and rice and bring that to the cookout, Let's just not ask people where they got their beans from. Like, I just think that, like, you would just look foolish wasting... Because the money's already been spent. You know what I mean? Like, that's a wash. It's in your cabinet. That's that. Uh, you know, if it's a car, obviously you're going to keep driving the car unless you got it like that to take the car back. But um, someone said, I'm using all my going until it's done. Then I'm making my own adobo and sasson. I mean, all this shit's just MSG, a little red food coloring, a little bit of paprika, and you're good to go anyway. way. So there you go. Um... Uh, someone here said RuPaul comes from that school of, of thought white is right and press the white exactly um, but you know what makes it sad it's like RuPaul what RuPaul is really good at I think is like tricking us into thinking that he's for the cause because you know the first winner of Drag Race was black um, I should have waited to do this and so you think like oh maybe you are a little woke and then voila here we are and it's like, no, you're not, you know? So that's that. Um, I'm just giving you cat inspiration. Uh, someone else here said, like, when white people were burning, they already bought Nikes, LOL. Yeah, it's like, at that point, Nikes already made the money. And now the thing I will say is a little different with the sneaker is maybe you don't want to keep wearing them, right? Like, maybe you want to limit, like, this is what I'll garden in. Or I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show up to the block party nike out because... You know, that's incorrect. I don't want to, I don't want to promote that. But like Goya child cheese, maybe some Goya in here. I don't know. I don't know, Diane, do you? So, the funny story with this hair that we're about to have a lot of fun with. Some of you out here may know this hair. Her name was London. I made her from scratch. I made her from just packs of hair. And she has served me well. We've used her for a lot of projects. But today, something happened that I never saw happen before with one of my pieces, one of my units. And so it inspired me to go in a different direction than we've ever gone here. And we're going to go on this road together. Are you with me? Are you with me? First of all, rest in peace, London. We speak your name, Ashe. Um, we're talking about the wig, not the city. Ooh, 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 ooh. Burnt out Another day is dawning. Touch me, it's so easy to leave me all alone with the man. Of my days in the sun, if you touch me, you'll understand what happiness is. Then a new day will begin. So yeah, so P Valley. <laughs> um, we gotta work on this right here. Oh, I need some pins. 
because it's not lining up the way I want to. But we'll get it right by the time y'all log off. We'll have a whole story. So P Valley, the things I enjoyed about P Valley, I'm always here for black women on screen, point blank, period, full out. I'm always here for a stripper. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, all of those things are like moments that I 100% stand for. Um, <clears throat> um, Uncle Clifford, Nico Annan playing Uncle Clifford, I think is a very interesting character. We've definitely seen, um, you know, genderqueer people on TV, but I love the fact that he's in a position of power and that he's kind of like unafraid of everything else. And we're getting to see like, black men, black cis mask presenting men who are attracted to femme gender queer people because we all know it exists. Um, but we, you know, it's only one episode in, so who knows how it's gonna play out. But just that it is, um, maybe I should shift it because this is not, this is looking real crazy. So that's what I enjoyed about it. I think there's some things that I'm curious to see how it's going to play out in the long run but you know oh no that's too the full misses there so we have to do it this way um i'm curious to see how it's going to play out in the long run but oh yeah that's where it is then a new day can begin burns out do y'all want some ears oh that's not on offer I don't have not a hairpin in sight. Meanwhile, in my other kit, I have like a hundred of them. So yeah, so that's what I'm giving you guys right now is just a little bit of that. I think I done rubbed half of this shit off. Um, we can always turn the volume up on this too. So that is that on P-Valley, but did y'all have any thoughts about it? Did you guys watch it? I definitely think you should watch it. It's a show that is executive produced by a black woman, is written by a black woman, is directed by a black woman. Um, dialect coach is a black woman. A lot of the actors are black women. The main characters are black women. So, you know, I'm here for it. They did use a black British woman, which I'm just over that. Like, I gotta just be honest. I love my British people. One diaspora, one planet. But I'm just like, black American girls need to work too. Or is it, is it, is it just me? Or is that, um, why you turn that mane around? Because we trying to get to, you know, to trying to get happy. I just want to be happy. Another thing, I have a very unpopular opinion. How many of y'all saw that performance of the um, the Navy Choir singing Circle of Life? But that <coughs> this hair is in my throat. So my issue, at least one person saw it. I'm sorry, I'm in my throat. Them people were singing. Like, would I cast them in the Lion King? Hell no, for a variety of reasons. But that white lady... And that seemingly Filipina, but that South, you know, that person of the Pan-Asian diaspora, they were singing. They were on pitch. Um, they had them syllables down. Um, so like, I can't cough. You cannot catch Corona through Instagram Live. It is only transmitted through posts and DMs. But um, it's not transmitted through Live. But um, I just felt like Someone said she hit it well, but this was not the time for her calling with that all white is choir. Now, I did have more of an issue with the fact that there wasn't diversity within the choir, but I'm like, at the end of the day, that's some South African chant, right? That ain't that ain't ours, period. Like, And that's a conversation for another day of just like, how much of the diaspora do black folk get to own? Because it's like, how many of y'all 23s and me's, 23s and we's are coming back saying that you're Zulu? Like, is that is that when we look at the maps of the triangle slave trade, you know, the same way Oprah... Henry Louis Gates gathered over and was like, honey, the Zulus ain't your people. They'll take your money. You can put your school there if you want because you're grown and you can do what you want to do. But like that ain't your people. Um, how many of us are ready to embrace that? You know what I mean? That like at what point do we, you know, and that's a whole other story. 
the whole other podcast. Another thing, I spent too much money on a microphone that I, um, so maybe there'll be a podcast coming or maybe it'll just sit in the box unopened. Like so many things in my life. Only time will tell. But I just, I guess my thing is I'm like, again, all the shit going on in the world, what I don't have energy for or time to be mad about is like a choir where the people are on pitch. Now, we want to talk about like how that, this was stupid. When we want to talk about how that white girl um, tried to do, and I'm telling you, wait, well, there's been so many who tried. So any one of those, I think that like, oh, actually, I think it kind of, I kind of like it. I don't like it on Facebook. I don't like the Facebook camera. Um, but I like it on IG. Um, if we want to talk about that, you know, where it's like, this ain't for you, it's incorrect. But I'm like, they were not doing it. Because I guess we get carried away about, like, concerts. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's like that whole thing with that white woman talking about she'll never sing again, um, that Sealy song. And I'm just like, in concerts, we've already accepted that you're not trying to be the character. At least I know that I am, right? Like, that this is not... That, like, if I do a concert and I'm like, dreidel, 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 I made you out of clay, and dreidel, 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 and when you die, I'll play. I'm not trying to be Jewish. I'm not trying to appropriate their culture or anything. If it's fucking December 16th and it's Hanukkah and I'm come see the lights, eight days and nights, we will remember on Hanukkah from days of old. Stories are told, we will remember on Hanukkah. It's like, to me, I don't think that that is a problem if I know what it comes from, what it's about, and I'm just trying to to show a little bit of, like, you know, community. I don't know. So that is where I just feel like people get carried away. Um, and I think we just have to allow a little more grace. Because she was on pitch, and, and then I just also think we live in this culture, too, where everybody is trying to, you know, everybody wants to make the funniest comments, so they're just like, how mean can I be? Um, you know, and hopefully it'll go viral. And it's like, that lady was just trying to sing this. What I will say is, ooh, if I would have put the wig cap on, maybe next time, if I put a wig cap on and then I could have hooked the, the pins, this would have sat exactly where I needed it to. And I probably would have been able to sit it behind here, which I think this would make it more fashion-y. You know what I mean? Like, I think giving you the ear gives it a little more like editorial vibe so and I can hear and it's a little less hot so we're just gonna see how long we oh there we go hopefully it'll carry us through to the end of the show and then you get my baby hairs let me brush those zoom um I wish I had a little bit of gel to like just bring that down and then <laughs> some call it a widow speak I call it baby hair and then you just get the brush stuck in the hair and so now that's ruined but um I think that this is the look. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got on this for today. I want to darken this a little bit and then we're done for real. Um, that's what I got on that. I just feel like sometimes people just want to, like I was watching one of Andrew Caldwell's lives because that's what my life has spiraled into. And I was just amazed at the number of people who were just logging in just to say mean things to him. Like, I just watch because I'm fascinated and I kind of keep it to myself. But I definitely don't comment and definitely not something mean to him. So I was just always amazed by that. So, yeah. Let me just give you a little bit of bounce for the kitty. Bounce, little kitty. Bounce, little kitty. Be a lion. Yeah, that's what we're going to end with um, before they kick me out of here. Who would like to start? If you'd like to um, sing Dorothy's part, request to be in the video right now. Otherwise, we're just gonna jump right to the line. I'm standing strong and tall. If on courage I must call. I messed up. If on courage you must call, then just keep on trying and trying and trying in my own way. I'm a lion. Hey. 
that's all I got for today. This was a lot of fun. We ended up someplace, as always. Never know where we're going, but we get there, and there we are. Because everywhere you go, there you are. Uh, that's all I got. Just remember to choose joy. Have fun. And just keep on trying and trying and trying in your own way. Be a lion. Not even lightning will be frightening to my lion. No need to hide. No to hide I'm standing strong and tall I'm the greatest of them all If on courage you must call then just keep on trying and trying and trying in your own you're a